Good morning, and welcome to First Lutheran Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent. God's people regret that they are unable once again to be together in His house, this beautiful sanctuary, on this fifth Sunday in Lent for worship. However, we continue to pray for everyone who has been impacted by the coronavirus, and we also ask that the Lord would protect and keep all those uh, hospital workers, medical personnel, and first responders as they go about their much needed and much appreciated duties in the care of people in our nation and in our world. The order of worship for our morning service is divine service setting four. It begins in the front portion of your hymnal on page 203. We open our worship this day with the singing of hymn 950, Splendor and Honor. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we gather to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be, we pray, in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue uh, reading the introit. The words of the introit come from Psalm 100 and 16, 
verses 1 through 4, and also verse 8. We read the intro at Psalm in unison. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. I love the Lord because He has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because He inclined His ear to me, therefore I will call on Him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We bow our heads to pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, is from the 37th chapter of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound. And behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, 
Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place in your own land. Then you shall know that I am am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read in unison our gradual words from Hebrews chapter 2. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. And if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus, of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you and Are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? 
If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. But when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. 
Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, we confess with one heart and one voice our one faith, and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the word. It is hymn 528, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you heard it. The gospel reading for today, it is long and it is complex. So I guess we'd better get down to business, which is precisely what Jesus does. Lazarus, come out. With a loud voice, he yells into the dead man's grave. Lazarus, come out. That's just what happened. Just like that, dead man came out of the grave. Jesus has been getting down to business over these past few weeks as we have followed him through the Gospels. He called for childlike faith from a theologically trained smart guy named Nicodemus, bringing him from the stone-cold deadness of law and order faith to the freedom of the greatest news of all time, 
God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he got down to business with a Samaritan woman at a well of water. A lady, parched, drying up inside, even as she was there drawing water. Tattered and tossed about by so many people who could care less about her. Bent and broken to the point where she had no more self-respect, no more hope. But Jesus got down to business with her. He gave her the water of forgiveness, drenched her in it, and it flowed forth from within her to everybody she met thereafter. Last week, as we heard, Jesus got down to business with a guy who couldn't see and with the religious leaders who thought they could see, but they were really like blind umpires in a baseball game. He gave sight to this man born blind shedding the light of His glory and saving power into the blinding darkness of know-it-all, self-righteous hearts. Wherever He is, Jesus gets down to business, including today. As in the Gospel reading, He turns to His disciples and He announces that they're going back to Judea to see about a good friend, Lazarus. The disciples, though, were not thrilled. They were alarmed. The area around Jerusalem is by this time a real hot spot danger zone. Only a few days before they were in Jerusalem and Jesus' detractors were so upset with him, they were going to stone him. Now, of all things, Jesus decides he's going to go back. But he isn't afraid. No concern in the least. After all, I mean, what can they do to him? Kill him? Well, yes, and they will, but He is in control of the timing of that. They will not take His life from Him. He will lay it down. The threat of death has no power over Him. Jesus gets down to business. Though from the Mary Martha side of things, as often from our side as well, Jesus sure does seem to take his sweet old time. I mean, if he had just been there when he should have been. Have you ever said that? But Jesus gets down to business in his time and in his way. This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, he says, when he hears about how gravely ill his good friend Lazarus is. Yet, It is for God's glory. Lazarus was indeed dead and gone, now four days and reeking in his grave. But Jesus was about God's business, and God's business is always the showstopper, the unmistakable action that causes people to shut up and take notice looking away from their selves and their own hotshot ingenuity and their own righteousness. Jesus gets down to business, and it's for God's glory. Now get this. Even even in the middle of his own sense of deep loss and gut-wrenching sorrow, Jesus expresses in the tears he sheds, nonetheless, he, he... gets down to business. Nothing, absolutely nothing, will get in his way. Not the timetable that we think he sure ought to be keeping. Not the powerful emotions that come with numbing tragedy and loss. Not even the threat of re-entering the very center of personal danger and destructive consequences. No, Jesus gets down to business. Lazarus, come out. Just what he is commanding leaves no room for schwaffle or doubt. God's business happens in his time and in his way. It happens. The dead man comes out alive and still sporting the grave wear. Jesus gets down to business. And although this business is the straw that breaks the camel's back, as it puts the screws to the religious leaders and 
forces their hands to the point that they're reaching for hammer and nails doesn't make Jesus any difference. He will not be stopped. Jesus, you see, has come from the Father to do the Father's business. The business of declaring the kingdom of God's reign in no uncertain terms. The business of taking his dear friend's death and using it for God's great glory. The business of taking the full weight of our deserved punishment for sin and nailing it to his cross. The business of suffering. The business of dying and being buried away in a tomb as dead as Lazarus, but being raised by God's power on the third day, declaring God's business complete, finished. It is finished. Death has been swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Let's get down to business. Jesus says to us today, as we are huddled together around our televisions and computer screens, listening and watching. He wastes no time on small talk, nor is he distracted by all that distracts us these days, coronavirus included. They're not just words to him. He listens as we return to our baptism, speaking as we did those words of confession and repentance. He knows our hearts, our thoughts, our, our attitudes, all our words and all our deeds. Jesus knows. He has come just in time, in God's time, come to rescue us, speaking the words that the Father would have us here in ear and in heart. My son, my daughter, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. That is precisely the way it happens again today. Jesus gets down to business, calling us to a brand spanking new life, to life risen in His triumph over our sin and our death, Life that lives in the boldness of childlike trust in Him alone. Life that is flooded with the living water of His presence and His peace. Life that holds tightly to His promises and sees His glorious leading even, even in the pitch darkness of death. Why, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. By the way, Jesus has more business to conduct. As the risen, ascended Lord, He will come again in all His great power and glory. It'll be like all the other times He shows up in God's time, but frankly, nobody knows the day or the hour. But He will come and He will call forth all who are in their graves. Lazarus, come out. Mary, come out. Eric, come out. Christine, come out. Sue, come out. Larry, come out. John, come out. Liz, come out. That's the Lord's last bit of business that He'll finish up. Dead bodies like Lazarus, like yours, will come out. The Lord of life is calling. He's not mincing words nor dilly-dallying around. His words are truth and they are life. You'll recognize his voice, the voice with which he's called you by name in your holy baptism, the voice with which he daily forgives you all your sins, the voice with which he welcomes you time and again to his table, the voice with which he cries with you in all of the losses in your own life, the voice of his healing comfort 
of His peace, be still. And of His final, welcome home. Well, then His business is done. It's finished. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the prayer of the church this Lord's Day, we want to remember those who remain ill and continue to need the Lord's healing comfort and strength, and they include Vicki Basler and Brenda Basler, Tony Basler's daughter, Janice Kaiser, George and Linda Walker, Doc Sternberg, and a dear friend of Don and Sandy Lindy, Becky. We also remember Mike Anderson and Mike's family now that the Lord has called home to heaven, and that on Friday evening called Mike's mom, Jean, home to be with him forever. We come, O oh Lord, with the dry bones of our broken hopes and disappointed dreams. Bind us up in Christ so that we may learn to pray with confidence, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all things needful to us and to our salvation. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your Spirit upon them. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your Spirit that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O eternal Lord, your Son has given us a new birth of water in the Word and planted faith in us that we might be your own children. Bless your church and supply her with able and caring pastors to nurture us in your Word and raise up faithful church workers who will serve us in your name. Continue, we pray, to be with and to lead our pastor-elect, Pastor Edward Monum, a Pueblo, Colorado, as he continues to give prayer and discernment to the call that we have extended to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all our enemies and teach us to be good and faithful citizens of this land, using all your manifold resources wisely and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O merciful Lord, your Son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endurance to all who suffer illness all who are troubled in mind or whose time on this earth is short. Especially do we pray this day, Lord, for Vicki, Brenda, Janice, George and Linda, Doc and Becky, and those that we name now in our hearts, as well as those citizens of our country and the many others throughout the world who have been beset with the COVID-19 virus. Raise us up, we pray, by your gracious intercession and deliver us from the afflictions of this life to reign with you in heaven forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O gracious God, you daily and richly grant us all things we need for this body and life. Bless our labors and grant us wisdom to use the fruits of those labors wisely and well for the care of our families for the poor in their needs, and for the support of your work in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O loving God, you established the family and ordered our relationship by your word. Renew husbands and wives in their love for each other, and refresh your families in the grace of caring, that our homes may be places of blessing and peace, where we serve each other in your name. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. O Lord God Almighty, through your Son, you have kept the promise of the ages and rescued us from sin. You have raised up the dry bones of a people captive to death and made us alive in Christ forever. Sustain on the, us in this hope that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life and be ready when our Savior comes again in His glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our worship with the hymn 422, On My Heart, Imprint Your Image. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of Grace. That life's riches, cares, and pleasures Never may your work erase Let the clear inscription be Jesus crucified for me Is my life, my hope's foundation And my glory and salvation Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and welcome by way of the technology, the internet, and all that it uh, provides for us. Welcome to this day, this the fifth Sunday in Lent from First Lutheran Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Pastor Larry Rockham and privileged to serve God's people here at First Lutheran as the vacancy pastor as we await word uh, from the called pastor-elect, the Reverend Ed Monham. Uh, he has been called by our congregation to serve as our full-time shepherd, our full-time pastor. And we expect, at least according to Pastor Monham's words, that he will be letting us know sometime tomorrow of the decision uh, that he has been led to by the Lord and Savior of the church. Continue, please, to remember him, his family, and the, the, the two congregations he serves there in Pueblo, Colorado. You're reminded uh, by uh, the uh, youth group to please order your desserts for your Easter dinner. Uh, you can order by April the 5th. Please see one of our young people, our high school young people, or Sheila Bird for an order form. This coming CARM lunch uh, will uh, be about the last time uh, that uh, Karen uh, Ferris uh, will be serving as the coordinator. Uh, she is looking for someone who will take that over. So if you feel so led by the Lord to serve in this vital and important outreach and caring ministry of First Lutheran, please let Karen know she would love to hear from you. We look forward to gathering together in the Lord's house for worship. This last of our midweek Lenten services coming up on the evening of April the 1st, Wednesday evening, here at First Lutheran in, at 6.30.
we realize that uh, it will probably be again via the internet and the technology that is available. I am grateful this day uh, to have a serving along with me and serving all of you, God's dear people, uh, watching this uh, from your home. I'm privileged to serve with Ed Needens, who is our pianist, uh, and uh, also Deborah Mitchell, who is working with our uh, video equipment and sound, uh, the chairman of our congregation, uh, uh, John uh, Hoffman, and Kevin Booth, uh, the chairman of our Board of Elders. We are grateful uh, that they took time out of their day uh, to help us uh, to do this so that we might hear God's word, respond to him in prayer and praise, and receive always the gifts that come from his word, the forgiveness of our sins, and life, and salvation. In the name of Jesus, God be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 